the highest mountains in the world, the Himalayas, home to the elusive snow leopard. We had an amazing encounter last winter in Ladakh. We were following a small group of ibex feeding on the slope when we heard of a kill in the valley close by. We placed camera traps around the kill and waited. As we had hoped, they captured the resident female snow leopard, Gyamo, the queen of these mountains. Later at night, the camera traps had a surprise waiting for us. Gyamo had two cubs. Cubs were a sign that this area is a great habitat for a breeding leopard. The next day, we saw them crossing a ridge. As they were making their way across, a big male suddenly appeared. Like all cats, male snow leopards will sometimes kill cubs. And this had us all worried. Gyamo decided to lead the cubs away, over the ridge to safety, to avoid any conflict. We waited, but she never returned. And that was the last we saw of her and the cubs. The snow is gone now, and we are back to try and pick up where we left off. Snow leopards are so rare and very difficult to film. They have evolved to live and survive in some of the harshest conditions on the planet, the top predator. Their survival here indicates that this is a healthy and biodiverse habitat. I've been filming wildlife for the past 40 years and use films as a tool to push laws and policies in favor of some of the most endangered species of the planet. I've always wanted to make a film on the snow leopard, the mysterious cat that lives and survives here in these high mountains. It has a real lure for me. We're going to spend a few days in Leh before we head out to acclimatize to the thin air and be prepared for the tough weeks that lie ahead. We're not even a quarter of the way there. What a climb it has been. And I've done many difficult terrains, but this one, same sign, thing different. Snow leopards live in this precipitous and hostile mountain, and I hope, I sure hope, I can find one. I have been following my father's footsteps, and I feel the need of telling important conservation stories to try and make a difference. I have been making films on wildlife for years, but filming the snow leopard has been the most challenging. So out of breath, but this is part of the acclimatization and it will be worth it because finally we need to get to 17,000 feet. That's why we saw the female snow leopard last year. They're just amazing creatures built for this terrain. Imagine having to run after each meal. They're just built for this environment and this altitude, of course. The snow leopard's powerful build helps it to climb steep cliffs. Using its long tail for balance, the fact that it lives here in this terrain is really a sign of how rich this landscape is. A real symbol of the last wilderness. So you're driving? Yeah, I'm driving. 
as I know the way. <laughs> okay. Looking at the landscape, I begin to wonder how it will even be possible to spot the snow leopard. We're going to meet a man who understands this landscape well. He knows this area like the back of his hand. And I think with his help, we will begin to understand the land of the snow leopard. What time is it? <laughs> we are meeting Norbu and his family after a full year and really hoping he can help us find the right spot to start looking for Gyamo and her cubs. So much gear and I'm sure we won't use all of this but can't come this far and then wish that we had something which we don't. Okay, the territory of the snow leopard goes beyond the ranges of these mountains to Bhutan, Afghanistan, and even Mongolia. But these borders are just for us. The snow leopard knows no boundaries. She moves for miles and miles in search of prey, a mate, and a home to protect her cubs. We are going to set up camp right here for the next few weeks and make this our base. The plan is to set up camera traps around this area and wait for some action. Norbu San Morup is helping me make a plan. Hi, Have a seat. Nadas, welcome, thank you. <laughs> How is it going? Okay, a bit short of breath at times, but... <laughs> <laughs> We've got all the gear sorted out. We're going to set two units. We'll be filming around the village. And then the Ronin is what we'll do. We'll Snow leopards cover possibly over two million square kilometers of the Himalayan ranges. But we've chosen this tiny spot in the mountain folds in India to try and see if we can track one down. We think it's a good spot, not because it is in the heart of Snow Leopard country, but by the number of times the Snow Leopard has been, been seen by the people here. Well, summer really isn't the best time to try and track a snow leopard. It's way, way easier in winter when the snow is there and we can actually follow the tracks and know which area they're active in. But what we found out was the female with cubs that I'd seen last winter is around this area. So even if there's a slim chance, we'll just have to take it. It is incredibly hard to sight and film wildlife in these areas. And one of the ways is to use camera traps. With a little knowledge, luck, and time, the mountain slowly begins to reveal what it's been hiding. Norbu is an incredible animal spotter. He knows every crack and bend of these mountains that surround his home. He even knows where the light falls and when and where to find the snow leopard. There are crevices and caves all over these mountains, hidden, safe, and almost invisible. Luckily, we have Norbu with us, who can read any clue left behind. Strong smell. Strong smell. Yeah, bones we hear smell. And the urine smell is also 
kommen sehr fressen. Das kann man so wie ist Territory hier. This is how you track a snow leopard in this inhospitable terrain. Telltale signs and strong smells, which even we can smell. This shows that this is a well frequented trail of the snow leopard. Snow leopards, like other cats, spray as they walk large tracts of their territory. We are looking for snow leopard's cat, bug marks, and likely rocks where a cat snow might have sprayed. Snow leopards share their territory with many other species. This is a unique ecosystem. It's difficult to spot the animals, but the place is very much alive. This is not very high for Morup, who has walked these mountains many times. He's good on these slopes, but for me, it's not that easy. 15,000 feet definitely feels high. So you think we're at least halfway there? Yeah, almost halfway, I think, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say like 60% there or something. <laughs> no. Okay, let's go. We are trying to find blue sheep, or ibex, the snow leopard's favorite meal. Signs of prey could mean the cat is around. The plan is to scout this area today and make sure this is a good spot for camera traps and possibly finding Gyamo. Got some ibex? Where? Let's see. You see that uh, big rock next to that? There's a smaller rock. Similar to that, hmm. black things, darker than the other rocks. Yeah, because that's oh that's ibex. God. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. There are so many. Once you see one, you see them all. All the wildlife here is so well camouflaged. The snow leopards, the ibex, everything just blends into the rocks. It really takes a trained eye to pick out the little signs and know that that is a snow leopard or that is an ibex. It's going to be hard. The only way we can make this work is actually follow the ibex, follow the prey, and find the leopard. So how was your day? We had a, quite an interesting day. We saw a lot of pug marks where the snow leopard had marked this territory. We have identified two crucial areas today, areas where camera traps can be placed and left for the next few weeks as we go higher in search of the snow leopard. Well, yeah, well, we, we didn't have much luck. We just sat around and waited. So I think uh, our plan tomorrow is to try and build that camera trap, take that up onto the other ridge on the other side. I'm tired. I've had a long, long day. Yes, well, let's turn in. This is an ancient land. A unique environment has formed here over hundreds and millions of years. Other than some hazy accounts, the history of this land and the people who live here is shrouded in as much mystery as the snow leopard. To truly understand the snow leopard and the challenges it faces today, it is imperative to understand the local culture and the people who share its home. Prehistoric petroglyphs prove that people here were deeply connected with their natural environment.
thousands of years old, these rocks are a unique clue to the ancient history of Ladakh. Thousands of years ago, someone must have sat here on this rock and made this etching. Even today, people living in this area are close to nature, just the way the people who carved this out thousands of years ago. These lands were sacred to the ancient people, repositories of biodiversity. These existing cultural connections can be used to create strong partnerships with the communities that live here for snow leopard conservation. The shepherds that live in this area have walked these routes for hundreds of years. These are pastoral communities for whom these mountains are their home. But they share this terrain with the snow leopard and they often cross each other's paths. When you live in such wilderness and such open landscapes and in such close proximity to nature, conflicts are bound to happen. Last winter, we put camera traps around this area in the hope of finding snow leopards. We needed to understand where we should be filming from and what were the right spots in this vast landscape for the best shot at getting the mother and her cubs on camera. You have a pencil or something? So, so we had been getting some snow leopard stuff with, with these smaller cameras. It's time to actually up our game. Do we have a scale of any kind? Bishli okay. Drill, drill, drill. Come on, yeah. Here we go. Just unplug it. That's a perfect hole. Let's try it out. The filter needs to fit in there. Whew. Okay, thank God, perfect fit. So back again this time. I was here last year, we'd put camera traps around these mountains here and the ones at the back. We got some stuff, but what we did learn was the pattern of the snow leopards. Actually, there were a few that were around, this, uh, around these parts. So back now with this guy, 4K video, fingers crossed, hopefully it works. We are building a strong and safe casing for this camera trap to protect it from the elements and keep it hidden from the animals. A bigger and better camera needed a bigger and better case. This is the setup we have. We have a sensor which will- When we started camera, camera trapping, there were weeks and sometimes months with nothing. Here we go. <laughs> Except the odd chukar and the changing light. And then quite by chance, a snow leopard. Our first snow leopard. And then some more. Over the next year, we noticed a pattern and something quite interesting, overlapping territories. There wasn't just one snow leopard here. There were a few, and each reacted differently to the camera traps we had left behind. But one thing was for sure, they were all using the same paths and the same rocks to leave messages. And then one of our other camera traps showed that the big male was still around. Definitely a threat to cubs that young. Today is a big day. Morup and I are going to hike up to a few spots and place the camera traps. With a little help, we plan to walk a few kilometers away from any habitation. We have just a few hours of daylight once we get to the top. 
we will have to work fast and make sure everything works before we leave the traps on the ridge for the next few weeks. We will climb over 2,000 feet higher from our base camp in search of the best spots on the ridge for the snow leopard. The climb looks doable from the base camp, but now I can really feel it. The air is thin and the loose shale makes the climbing tough. Ibex scat on this route is a welcome sign and proof that this area is well frequented by snow leopard prey. Been a couple of hours since we've been climbing. And we've just about begun our climb. It's a short walk of three to four hours, but it's really steep, making it difficult not only for us, but for the horse too. And we have to go right on that ridge. And finally, with the setting sun, we made it to the top. <laughs> Three hours. I'm so excited to be here. There was something of that feeling that the snow leopard walked here. I'm thinking that if I was a leopard, this seems like a natural trail to follow. Then there's the gravel, but shale is too, too slippery. There it is, all those bug marks. We seem to have identified the cat's possible routes on this ridge, and the plan is to set up four camera traps around this rock. We have four camera traps, so one over there, behind that rock that's already set up. One, two, three, four. Great. There seems to be enough bug marks here, and with some luck, the cubs and the mother will walk around this rock over the next few weeks. All camera traps are set, and now we have to check each one to make sure that they are working. As the light starts fading, we have some bad news. So after making it all the way up here, what we found is that one of our camera traps has failed before we even began. Some of the wiring has also short-circuited. I'm gonna try and fix it now. The light's going down pretty fast. It's getting cold every minute. Don't know what's gonna happen, but we have three working camera traps, one of the 4K ones. Let's see, let's see what happens, fingers crossed. Each camera is important, and a malfunctioning camera has reduced our chances of filming Gyamo and her cubs. We have to depend on three cameras instead of four. We are running out of ideas and time. Being up here at night is not safe, and we have to quickly try and fix this and get back to base camp. Let's go. Go ahead. We came unprepared to spend the night on the ridge and have to get down as fast as we can. With only headlamps, the climb down is even harder. We have to rely on our instincts to get back to camp safely. The crew and my dad must be worried. Before we had left base camp in the morning, I had set up a time lapse of the ridge with the camera trap. At night, the time lapse caught a flash. Something had triggered one of our cameras on the ridge, and I couldn't wait to get back up there. But that would have to be in a few weeks. Ecotourism is benefiting thousands, but the impacts of uncontrolled tourism with little management has had some negative impacts. Stanzin is a local filmmaker and an environmental activist, is driving me to a garbage dump just outside Leh. This is what I wanted to show you, sir. Not so far from Leh city, it's only one and a half kilometer far from there. Well, all I can say is so I'm shocked. I can't believe that such a huge garbage dump exists here. And I'm also feeling guilty because I think I'm part of this garbage. I use plastic bottles and I 
and pained. Even we can't believe how the tourism can affect such a place like this. More than two lakh tourists visit Ladakh every year. And it is estimated that an average of 30,000 plastic bottles get dumped here during the summer months. Unlike garbage dumping areas in the plains, here there are no boundaries to the dumping ground. The garbage flies in whichever direction the wind takes them. There's an urgent need for garbage management and for strict rules that need to be enforced. And this is not only the garbage dump, and this is the grown breeding for the these feral dogs, you know. You will, now we are in around like 930 somewhere here. Otherwise it's like, you know, hundreds and thousands of dogs here. And we Rapid have, urbanization yeah. and uncontrolled dumping of garbage has resulted in the emergence of feral dogs. These are packs of dogs who hunt and scavenge near these dumps and in the cities. There are more than 5,000 dogs in Leh alone. This is alarming. And the shocking news was the death of a young girl by a pack of dogs. I've been following the feral dog issue all over India. I think over 30 million dogs are roaming around, forming packs and going back to the wilds. And this is a serious concern. And uh, I can see it manifesting itself here. Over the years, the incidents of feral dogs with predatory behavior attacking wildlife have increased in Ladakh and across the country. In a rare and shocking case, a pack of dogs was documented chasing and ambushing a Himalayan brown bear. Incidents of them attacking snow leopards have also been documented. Feral dogs pose a huge threat to wildlife populations, and the issue is getting further complicated. Dogs and wolves in the area are interbreeding, often enough for locals to have named this creature, calling it Kipshang. The consequences of this cannot be understood easily and may need years of research and study, but the changes are happening so quickly that the scientific community may not be able to understand the present scenario before it gets out of hand. I'm going to meet His Eminence Thukse Rinpoche at the Hemis Monastery to understand the connection with nature that people have here and its relevance in Buddhist philosophy. He might also have a different perspective on where we might have gone wrong in maintaining the balance between development and protecting Ladakh's natural heritage. What we need at the moment in this planet is that the love and compassion. It is the essence of Buddha's teaching. The planet is going through a troubled time. And I think for thousands of years, mm -hmm. Buddhism way of life and values kept and gave us a harmonious planet. But somewhere along the line, the earth began to suffer. What happened? Where did we go wrong? Uh, this all suffering and challenging and all these things, basically it's nothing that it's natural. It's all uh, human-made challenges, human-made disasters. I feel it's not, it's nothing something which is happening just by, just by no reasons, naturally. People love to call it natural. Natural disaster, natural, natural. But uh, uh, in my understanding is that I don't think anything is natural. I feel everything is like human-made. We human are making the world suffering. We humans are making the snow leopards suffer. So now this world now needs uh, love, compassion with action. So do you see hope for this very troubled, fragmented world? Yes, I, I have a lot and lots of hope. On my own level, I'm trying to at least to take care of my own nest, the small nest called Ladakh. I'm sure this area with your thought and energy We'll see a lot of change and of yeah. course hope. Hope, yes, yes, we all hope. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. The people of Ladakh share an ancient connection with these mountains and nature that is right at their doorstep. 
The single-minded dedication toward kindness and compassion and a leader that looks towards the future gives me hope that much can still be done to protect the snow leopard in its habitat. Always aware of maintaining this delicate balance, this philosophy runs so deep that there is a word for it, Jungwa. But today, we live on a broken planet. When you talk of poaching in India, you think of tigers and rhinos, and rarely the snow leopard. <laughs> Snow leopards are still being hunted across their range. Some captured alive and hundreds of others killed for their skins. And all to feed a disturbingly organized wildlife trade industry. Given the hostile terrain in which the snow leopard lives, it is difficult to imagine anyone hunting this cat. But poaching and revenge killing are grim realities. The extent of poaching is not known, but by the time we get to know the numbers, the populations would have disappeared. The increase in the livestock in the area and degradation of the natural habitat of the leopard has directly led to livestock predation. Snow leopards often come down to villages looking for prey. The open pens are an easy target, and the leopards in this area are known to go on a mass killing spree, killing almost all the livestock in one go. The problem is increasingly complicated by the Himalayan wolves, who also live in these mountains and also kill livestock. People's livelihood is dependent on the livestock here. And this often leads to revenge killing of these cats by the villagers. The wolves are also trapped and killed, often by pelting of stones. I'm on my way to meet Sevang Namgyal at the Snow Leopard Conservancy Trust that promotes grassroots conservation measures to address human-animal conflict issues. I'm very interested to find out how they're studying the numbers of cats in Ladakh and how they plan to tackle the increasing conflict in this area. I'll come and talk to you, see you. So we have been uh, doing camera trap, uh, uh, trapping you know, for the last uh, several years. And that's because, like, you know, we still don't know how many snow leopards there are in Ladakh, you know, which is a shame. Uh, in our camera trapping effort till now, we covered about uh, an area of about uh, 5,000 square kilometers. And within that, we counted about 39 snow leopards. And so if you extrapolate that to the entire Ladakh region, which is about 80,000 square kilometers, like, you know, uh, I think it uh, looks like, you know, there's a good, good population of snow leopards uh, in Ladakh. So, I mean, I can show the you... The trust has been working with local communities uh, you know, to protect uh, livestock through simple measures which have led to a big change in the people's attitudes. Camera traps or what you've taken. The snow leopard has become suddenly an uh, income generator. Yeah. People's uh, attitude definitely um, has changed, you know, over the years uh, towards snow leopard, you know, with uh, all these uh, uh, activities. So, yes, and there has been a change. Uh. Actually, I would like to go and see this together with you. Yeah. Exactly sure. what the ground changes are and the Snow Leopard Conservation Trust works closely with the communities that share resources with the snow leopard and other wildlife. 
one of the main focus has been uh, mitigating the life, uh, the conflict between the human and snow leopard, and the conflict in the uh, in terms of snow leopard, um, you know, getting into livestock pens and killing a lot of sheep and goats. It's because Ladakh is a treeless uh, area, and like you know, it's, people, it's difficult for people to you know. Uh, to cover the roof of the coral, for example, so they just left it open, and then it was very easy for the snow leopard to jump in. So we provided this wire mesh. To what sort of success have you had? The success has been really uh, phenomenal. Like you know, almost 95% of the problems like got solved just by this simple. 95%. 95%. Yeah. He's Tsering uh, Nangdus. Uh, he's Julie. the owner. Julie. Julie. Yeah, Julie. Julie. So let's see inside. Karsten, ba yo dale. Look. Yeah. Oh, surprise! There's Car David also there. Julika, what are you doing here? A simple yet ingenious way has been developed to mitigate the mass killing of livestock by leopards, covering the livestock enclosures with a wire mesh. My compliments on this great initiative. I think this is a success story and 95% success. Brilliant. Apart from snow leopard, we ha we also have like you know a lot of wolves uh, prowling in the mountains. So sometimes the wolves uh, actually uh, usually kill up in the mountains the snow leopard inside, and for that uh, uh, we have Car David here. Like you know he has been observing them. You know all, all over. Like yeah, you know, we've uh, been uh, uh, yes. So he he will tell you more about you know what uh, his experience like you know with the wolves uh, around this place. Uh. Over 150 snow leopard enclosures have been set up each benefiting an average of seven families. These have been constructed all over Ladakh. When you live in such close proximity to nature, conflicts will arise, encounters will happen, and accidents will take place. We are surrounded by wilderness, and we just stepped into this village. These people share their space with nature and all other wildlife forms, and a small intervention has changed life here. David is taking me to Spango Valley, a unique conservation model in partnership with the community that lives here. They have transformed this once overgrazed valley to a biodiversity hotspot. So this is the wolf activity area. Oh yeah, you're right, yeah. But right now they are all in upper reaches with their young ones away from the human habitat. Involving local communities in decision-making and planning has had positive impacts on snow leopard conservation and it has changed people's attitudes even towards the wolves. And the other thing is, it's like walking through a perfume factory. I can smell so many fragrances. In yeah, you can see this, 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 this plant here. Smell it, it, it it's so lemonish. Wow, Beautiful. this is exhilarating. I've never smelled anything and, like this. And place. these are all protected right now. Uh, this, the whole valley has been protected for the uh, ibex to graze, and villages don't send their animals here. Spango is a conservation model that has really worked well for both the leopard and the people who live here. The local communities have left this area untouched. With no grazing here, the local flora and fauna have bounced back. With biodiversity increasing, the prey species have returned. This area has now become prime snow leopard territory and without conflict. So this is the village we are near. This is Himishukpachan. And this is the bull trap I was talking to you about. What a lethal contraption. Many wolves must have been killed here. Yeah. Put a live goat inside. They can hear them from far come. Sometimes even a pack of wolves will go inside and Next day, the villagers will come and kill them. The need is for community participation. Local people and communities are joining in. Wolf traps like these are being dismantled. Revenge killing is coming down. And with that, change is taking place. There is hope for the beautiful, elusive cat of the mountains. It's been a few weeks now, and Morup and I have hiked back up to the same ridge to check on the camera traps in the hope that Gyamo and her cubs have passed through this area and our camera has captured them. The flash of light that we saw that night was only a fox.
We can see the cameras have worked, triggering each time something passes by. And then, it's Gyamo, our queen. Is that the last video? The camera filmed her with only one cub before it shut down. This is bittersweet news. One cub is alive. But is the other cub okay? We will still have to find out. Each time I come here, I feel I understand this cat a bit more. There really is such little information out there and scientists are still trying to understand snow leopard behavior. While filming this, we found out that the snow leopard has been taken off the endangered list. This seems hurried and is worrying. The actual number of wild snow leopards in India and worldwide is still not known. There is so much to learn about this very shy cat and this landscape it lives in. We will have to be back. This landscape is already facing the threats of a warming climate and changing land use. We destroyed the oceans, changed their chemistry, poisoned with our pollution, and even emptied it. We have even broken some of the vital biodiversity links. And standing here, I see this pristine protected area. And I really hope we can keep it that way. We got her with one cup, but the camera trap malfunctioned. So what's the plan? Well, there's still one camera trap I have to check. I doubt there's anything, but you never know. <laughs>